What is going on, overriders, formerly known as overthinkers? Welcome to the show. I as Gordon, you as you, and we are all together here at the Grab Bag. Um, so, right off the bat, let's get into this. I was at Starbucks, and it's it's this lady who's always there. She's always working. I swear to God, they don't give her a deal. I'm talking to her about the show, and I mentioned the whole thing about the overthinkers. She goes, wouldn't they be overriders? I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, well, they're overriding how they think, right? And I said, yeah. She goes, so they'd be overriders, not overthinkers. So I just, I told her to shut up and give me my caramel macchiato. Um, No, I didn't. I didn't. I asked her if I could mention her on the show. She's like, no, no. So, but she's a really sweet lady and she's always the Starbucks to go to. So thank you for that. So from henceforth in, you are overriders, not overthinkers. Uh, so you can't say you didn't get the memo. Um, had a problem with some of the episodes. I had like five or six episodes. I had to take down, remix the sound to, and then repost them. Um, apparently, what had been going on is the microphone in my webcam has been at war with the microphone microphone. And they've been battling for dominance. And by doing that, they've been canceling each other out, which makes it hard for you to hear me. Um, so I had to redo the sound on those, and then I had to re-upload them, uh, and it just it took forever in a day, and finally about three in the morning I got to go to bed. So after they're uploaded, I went ahead and re-entered them into the playlist, and you know, you look at my splash page, and it's just, it's a video decoupage. It's like, hey, here's a bunch of videos, and like you know and my OCD is just like tripping y'all because I hate disorder like place for everything everything for a place you know uh, you look at the playlist it's very organized one two three four five you know and so for the, me to see this on my page just drives me crazy and there's no way for me to fix it you know so <sighs> um, so there's that um, I've been reading the news a lot, been watching a lot of documentaries, uh, haven't been sleeping well again, so I got time to kill. Um, and, uh, I'll be doing a, a show pretty soon about insomnia and, you know, things like that. Uh, just because why not? It's my show and I can choose the topics. Um, but if you have a topic idea, please feel free to drop it in the comments below. Find us on Twitter, at Thought Override, using the hashtag Thought Override. Find us on Facebook, Thought Override. Go ahead and, you know, give me your suggestions, give me your ideas for shows, something you want to see. You want to be a guest? You could be. I mean, there's no reason that says you shouldn't be. Um, so, I've been reading the news a lot, and I came across these articles, and two articles in particular stuck out to me. Um... One of which was John Hopkins. There's, you know, it started out in early early January, and it was like a blurb, and then it became this whole big thing. Uh, apparently, John Hopkins reveals that the founder of John Hopkins owned slaves. Okay, I'm looking for the surprise here, folks. I mean, I'm sorry, but during that time, everybody had something or did something they really shouldn't have done. They married to a 14-year-old. They had multiple wives. They had teenage wives. They had teenage husbands. You know, uh, I mean, that kind of thing. Yeah, probably owned slaves. I'd, I'd put money on it, if I, you know. But I'm not surprised by it. I don't see why people are surprised by it. You know, that's like, you know, going, Hey, did you know that Jeffree Star does makeup? Oh my god, really? Wow, that would explain why he wears makeup all the time. Duh. Um, but, uh, but so there's that. I read that. And then the one that, the one that just tickled me the most, y'all. I just... This is the article that makes me question humanity. Like, I, I like, actively question Darwinism. Um, backlash erupts. As an artist erects a 108-foot vagina sculpture on Brazilian hillside. Wow. Who would have thunk that? Backlash? Really? No. 
I mean, it's only a ginormous JJ. I mean, you know, come on. But let's let's really talk about this. A 108 foot vagina on a hillside. And I tried to explain it and I actually accidentally used the word gash trying to explain it. It's a sinkhole. It looks like a giant sinkhole. I'm not going to post any pictures of it. Uh, there'll be a link to the article, you know. Uh, but uh, but it looks like a giant sinkhole in a hill, and then somebody filled it with like pink fiberglass. That's exactly what it looks like. And she she doesn't get the big deal, folks. She doesn't see what the big deal is with it. Why is it a problem? Oh, you know. And uh, I'm like, okay, so let's go ahead and switch the roles on this. Me, your friend Gordon, goes to the Denver hillside and builds a 108-foot penis. Now I'm going to let that sink in for a second. All right. Okay, we good? All right. So, I would have the Time's Uppers and the Me Tours and the feminists and everything crucifying me literally crucifying me on my 108 foot penis statue um and she's like well you know everybody knows you know uh, uh, everybody forgets that we have it i'm like who forgets that everybody kind of knows that's what the whole sex industry is built on duh i mean you know she doesn't see the uproar she doesn't get the point you know she's too busy being avant-garde I mean, it's like, look, you know, quit smoking your clove cigarettes and just go away. All right? Just stop it. You're not Andy Warhol. You're not even in the, in, in the vicinity of an Andy Warhol. So quit trying. All right? A 108-foot JJ is not going to get you in the league of Andy Warholism. All right? Because I know if I built a penis that big, I mean... Everybody would be like, oh, you know, you owe apology to society and da, da 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 And there'd be all this uproar and I'd have to like sell my house and move to Alaska. And that's just how it would be. And even in Alaska, they probably wouldn't want me. They'd be like, you built a giant penis, go away. So, there's that. Um, <clears throat> and like I said, there'll be links to these articles in the, uh, in the thing. So, watching documentaries... I watched, okay, I didn't watch, I'm not going to lie. Um, it's a documentary called White Noise, and it's about the white supremacy movement, you know, within the GOP and QAnon and all that. And when I say I didn't watch, I watched about maybe a half hour of it until I just had to turn it off because I couldn't deal with the stupid. Like, it was just, you know, well, we shouldn't be ashamed to be white, uh, Who's ashamed to be any? I'm not ashamed to, you know. They kept going on about white privilege and, and you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, look, y'all, here, look, this is me. This is Gordon. This is your friend Gordon, okay? I'm going to tell you about white privilege for someone like me. It's non existent. I've never had white privilege, ever. People like, well, you're a white male. You got white privilege. Okay. When I was homeless for like close to 10 years, I didn't see any, any white privilege there, okay? I didn't see any white privilege when I was eating out of a dumpster. I didn't see any white privilege when I was getting beat up by the cops. All right, I didn't see any of that white privilege. And guess what? Here I am, and I've been, I've been non-homeless for about 12 years now. So here I am, 12 years later, and guess what? Still no white privilege. They don't give me free coffee at the Starbucks. I don't get free cars when I walk onto a lot. I, you know, nothing. I mean, in the time that, that uh, you know, I've been uh, online, or however you like to word it, I've had to start GoFundMe so I could move. The place we were living at was a, a townhouse, and that's where Orion and I live. Orion lived in one of the townhouses. And, you know, they sell the company, and they're like, by the way, you have months to move. So we're scrambling. And I put up a GoFundMe. And again, kudos to my friend Dennis. Because, you know, Dennis promoted the hell out of that don't you know GoFundMe link to help me move. I raised about $60. Uh, 
and uh, out of a goal of about four grand. So that lets you know about my white privilege right there. Um, but uh, they're going on about white privilege and you don't need to be ashamed and na na na. And I'm like, what are these people on? Where do they live? Not on the same planet I do. I mean, you know, I have no guilt about white privilege because I don't have any white privilege. You know, if I walked into the bank and they're like, oh, well, there you are. Here's your $10,000 for your charge. I'd be like, okay, I've got white privilege. But uh, so, you know, that was the main droning on about points of uh, that uh, 30 minutes of that document. I couldn't tell you about the rest of it. Oh, no. And the other thing was uh, the, the troubles dating within the right supremacy culture. And I'm like, really? That's like the most of your problems. That's the hill you want to die on. All right, that's you. So there was that. And uh, then I watched uh, this really in interesting documentary uh, from Vice. Um, and they're always good for documentaries. I, I, you know, I love them for their documentaries. It's called QAnon, The Search for Q. And uh, I think it's four episodes. Wait, oh, I don't. Let me let me double check here on IMDb for you kids. Three episodes, excuse me. And so it's three episodes, and it's really interesting insight into the QAnon community uh, as to how delusional and idiotic they all are. Um, they're just stupid. Just wow. They think there's some government insider named Q who's dropping these crumbs, you know, and blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, my God. It's like, you know, this isn't Deep Throat. This isn't Washington, D.C. in the 70s. That isn't this, you know. And uh, I didn't know this, but they posted, like, a bunch of dates about when things were supposed to happen. Like, Hillary Clinton was supposed to get arrested and things like that. And they're like, this is going to happen on this and this date. And these dates would come to pass and nothing would happen. And people just kind of overlooked it. Like, oh, well, you know, it was a conspiracy. And da, da, da. I'm like, wow, seriously? I mean, you know, I can understand if like one or two, you know, it's like that guy, that preacher he used to predict, the, you know, the end of time. He'd predict the end of days and he'd be like, okay. And, and like over a 30 year period, he had like 60, like, you know, predictions that never came true obviously because we're here talking but he had like over and like they on a Huffington Post if I can remember this guy's name I'd post the article but they posted like all the days where he predicted the end times and like completely cocked it up and his follower was just like oh well you know it's God's will it's God's will or he'd tell him you know well we prayed enough and we stopped the end of the world and they'd believe it and that's what remind me of uh, because they're going through and they're talking to all these cats. And let me say, the guy, I, I don't know his name, uh, but the guy who founded 8chan, uh, he was a little person, um, and uh, and they're interviewing him, and he just has zero Fs to give. Just none. He could care less about what information he was giving away and who he was giving it to. Like, I totally love this dude. I mean, he was just giving up the whole you know, enchilada and he was just nonchalant about it you know and uh, he talked about H-Han and you know that's how it was born and you know interesting history to it you know um, and uh, how this other guy took over and you know and they're talking to this general or or whatever the hell he was. He was an ex-CIA, FBI spy. He's like, I'm the greatest spy that ever was and ever will be. And I'm like, right. You keep selling yourself that, you know. Um, it, it reminded me of my youth uh, when I was in high school. There used to be this thing called the Alex Bennett Show. And it was a radio show. And they had a live studio audience. And you go there from about 6 a.m. to like 9 or 10 a.m. You know, and they have guests, that, you know, and all that stuff. I mean, I met met a lot of interesting people there. I met Ron Jeremy. Uh, you know, I, I met uh, Emo Phillips, comedian. Uh, I met uh, Sandra Bernhardt, comedian. Uh, most of them were comedians. Bobcat Goldthwait, you know, Dana Gould. You know, you meet all these people. And it was really cool. And uh, we went there one morning. Uh, I didn't have to start school till late, so don't freak out. I wasn't being drunk. 
because uh, I was in advanced programs, I didn't start school till like third period, which was like 11 o'clock. So I didn't have to be there. Uh, so I'd go. And uh, they had this woman there who was like this, you know, ex-spy or whatever she claimed to be. And, of course, she'd written a book, and that's why she was there. And uh, she takes up this piece of paper, and she rolls into a, a cone, and she holds it to Alex Bennett's throat, and she's like, I could impale you with this and kill you right now, you know. And Alex Bennett's like, oh, I'm scared, and you know. And so she leaves, you know, she's done with her, her plugging her book, and so she's out of there. He's like, my God, was she trying to sell that too hard or what? And, you know, it was, it, everybody thought that because she was. That's what this guy reminds me of. And uh, he's got like a three, three name thing. He's, you know, something Steven, I don't know. Um, but, uh, but this guy's like, you know, just he's so in the in the intelligence community that he doesn't know anything i'm like okay so you're in the intelligence community and you don't have a clue about anything right 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 you know and you know he's saying that you know uh sandy hook was a false flag and they were all actors and mannequins and and you know no one witnessed 9-11 kind of a thing and i'm like this dude is high on meth or something. I mean, yeah, I mean, who saw 9-11? Nobody, right? Come on. What? Are you out of your mind? Are you insane? But, you know, they narrow it down to Q is one of five people and blah, blah, blah. And I don't really care who Q is. I just, I don't. Um, I swear it doesn't interest me. I mean, the, the, the Flat Earthers and, oh, I'm going to get to that documentary too. And the QAnon and, you know, the white supremacists, they're all in the same lot to me, which is IQ of carrots. I mean, you know, actually, you know what? That's unfair to me to say. Common sense of carrots. Because they're very smart people. They just over-justify these things to themselves. Well, Hillary Clinton was supposed to be arrested on XYZ date, and she didn't. And then they justify why not. Like I said, goes back to the preacher who was predicting end times. They just justify why it didn't happen. Um, but so watch that. Uh, watch a documentary about Flat Earth called Beyond the Curve or Behind the Curve or something. Uh, recommended to uh, to us by one of our watchers here at uh, Thought Override. And, uh, well, <laughs> these people are just off their gob. They're just... <laughs> I mean, you know, and they're all posing like this. They're all like, you know, they put their arm out, you know, to signify flatness. And it's like, you know, this guy's talking about, you know, I can't see, you know, I can't see these plane on the on the, the airplane tracking thing. I can't see these planes coming from, and I waited, and I waited, and I waited. And no plane ever came from the, the, the sea. And this, you know, they go to interview this one woman uh, at California Institute Technology, she brings up the website and they're watching it within the first like minute of them watching it here comes this plane she's like wow that was really easy you know <laughs> like <laughs> and just these you know there, there was one guy i really liked because his whole attitude was look i don't know if it's flat or round but i'm going to do research and whatever that research leads to i'm going to believe and i really dug this cat because he was really genuine in his in his quest for knowledge and i respect that because, as I say, you know, don't don't just go ahead and believe anything blindly. Research it. Look into it. Um, you know, and that's what this cat was doing. And I totally respect him for it. And these other, there's this other cat who was doing research for his narrative. Meaning, if research came out that contradicted his narrative, he wouldn't tell anybody about it. And in the documentary, he pretty much says so. He talks about, a, uh, you know, uh, this laser scope thingy and he's like well you know if it's 360 degrees in 24 hours and that means it has to move 15 degrees in an hour and da -da -da. and he does the the the, the uh, experiment and it moves 15 degrees per hour he's like but we're not going to tell anybody about this because it wouldn't be good for our movement and da -da -da. i'm like wow look at that the powers that be line to the powers that aren't nothing new about that is there uh, I mean, you know, we talked about that before, didn't we? 
it's you know you have those who have and those who have not and we you know all know who's in power there um so there's that then i decided to take kind of like a light-hearted you know kind of documentary and and it was called love fraud from showtime documentaries and you know there's like four or five episodes to it and uh it's about this cat who is just ugly as sin but somehow he's married and like engaged to like 30 quadrillion women and he rips them off for thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars and they have this blog where they talk about and it's like i'm wife number 13 and i'm like good god like you know how'd you get anything done because he was like seeing like three or four women at a time and you know i'm like come on i barely have time to do anything much you know I, anyway so they hunt him down and and uh it's a much more light-hearted fare than than what i usually watch but you know I just couldn't, y'all. I mean, I watched the whole thing, but I mean, I just, you know, to me, I just couldn't believe this guy was, you know, as pimping as he was, because he looked like a Frangie. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and to me, <clears throat> that brought up something, because, you know, you have these guys go around, you know, uh, back in my day, we used to call them gigolos, you know. You have a younger man with an older woman, or you have a younger man with a lonely hearts club member, or a widower, or blah, 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 and he gets with her for a little bit, and there's an exchange of sex, and there's an exchange of money, and everybody goes about their business. And then you have the trophy wives, who, same premise, you know, a widower, and, you know, um, you know, rich, old, blah, blah, I mean, uh, as much as I hate to do it, everyone's going to bring up Anna Nicole Smith anyway, so I might as well get out of the way. Um, that kind of thing. So, those kind of situations. And that's not what this is. Um, he's just out seducing women. You know, he talked this one woman into buying a restaurant, and then he emptied out, you know, the, the bank account of the restaurant, and he was in the wind. You know, and and she was surprised and she really didn't have any her name was carla she didn't really have any reason to be surprised because you had all these women who were the exes of this cat calling her going girl you got to get out of there now this guy's nuts this guy's a sociopath you gotta go and she's like but he loves me i don't believe anything you're saying and that kind of thing and then he ripped her off and then she was all mad about it to me she has no reason to be mad about it. She was warned by every... Like, literally, all the women on this blog were like, Girl, run. And she didn't. And then she got ripped off, and then she got mad about it. To me, she has no reason to be mad about it. She was warned countless times. Um, but to me, you know, I, I miss the, the old paradigm. You know, you had an older man with a younger woman, or you had an older woman with a younger man, and everybody kind of knew what was up. You know, it wasn't like, you know, nowadays where they're like, oh, my God, it, to me, more is with, uh, you know, some guy who's 18 years old and, ooh, the scandal. There's no scandal there. There is no scandal there. Look, you know what? If you're an older woman or an older man and you want to get your freak on with somebody younger than you, well, God bless you. Do it. You earned it. All those lines on your face, all those scars, you earned it. You know, I mean, and people talking trash about it, you have no right to talk trash about it because in 20 years you could be doing the same thing. You know, you have these, these people who are these social justice warriors going, well, that's exploitative. No, it's not. They know the arrangement. They know exactly what's going on. You know, I love your money, not you. And that's exactly what's going on. I'm here for the money and everything else is arbitrary. Everything else is secondary. As long as you give me the money, then I'm good. Boom. I don't know. But there will be links to all those documentaries in the description below. Um, 
let's see. Real quick before we go, um, going to be seeing my buddy Orion this week, friend of the show. Uh, we're going to be hanging out, having coffee. Um, you know, no big whoop. He'll come over. We'll have coffee. We'll talk. Um, but, uh, but you know, looking forward to that. Haven't seen my buddy in a while. Uh, and, uh, you know, for those of you who don't really know, Orion and I are, like, super mega tight. But, you know, when they sold the townhouses and we had to move, we kind of went our separate ways. And then it became, like, talking, you know, over the phone and, you know, or texting or whatever, you know, we were doing. And then it came less because he got a different job. And uh, so, you know, when we when we hang out, we hang out for like hours. And, you know, you know, it's really great. It's really therapeutic for me because, uh, you know, he's my buddy. I love him dearly. Um, but uh, but so who knows? Maybe we'll record a spontaneous show. Even if it's only 10 or 15 minutes, we'll still, you know, maybe do something. I don't know. Anything can happen in this office. Um, and I really mean anything. But uh, but anyways, that has been Grab Bag. Um, if you liked it, please hit that like button. Subscribe. Follow us on Facebook, Thought Override. Follow us on Twitter, at Thought Override. Use the hashtag, Thought Override. And until then, don't stop thinking.